Hello, friends. I'm Kerry Farr. Welcome to In Your Corner. Our good friend, Reverend Henry Schaefer, joins us again. And Henry, thank you so much for staying with me for the second week. So Glad good to be to back. See. Now, so when we ended last week's show, we were talking about demonic oppression, and you were talking about a spirit called mind control that looks like an octopus, and there was somebody that came to your office that was delivered from this spirit. So if you'd take us back and kind of recap and give us the rest of the story, we'd love to hear. Okay, so one of the main things is that people don't realize why do I continue to battle certain things once I go through deliverance. Uh, I can make go through a certain area like we talked about, maybe for um, a pornography, an, uh, like the octopus, he has so many arms, eight arms on him, and that controls uh, the person's mind, will, and emotion. And this is a spirit being called a part of the marine kingdom. And uh, a person who has been saved, they are a Christian, uh, once they become saved, their mind can still be all over the place. They can still be battling sins, and they don't understand why. Well, they have a demonic spirit that's called mind control. And deliverance can set that person free. Everybody has this. And when I say that, I don't try to say that to bring offense to anyone. But the reality is all have sinned, all have come to the, to short of the glory of God. That's, that's offensive for some people when you say that. Everybody's in that category. And when we're talking about demon oppression, that everybody has these things. Nobody's exempt from this. You understand? But deliverance brings about your deliverance. So there it's not only a physical thing, but, you know, and sometimes I, when I was young, that sexual drive was so incredible. I really feel for young men because it's almost uncontrollable. God wanted us to procreate, so he gave us that desire, but it's so hard to control for a young man. So what it is, is our society has made it now so that a person can live under mom and dad's roof in the basement till they're 28 years old and not even have to be on their, be on, still on their insurance. That's not the way God's made this thing to be. God has made it to be that you leave mother and father at the young age, and now they're supposed to be under the matrimony, under the bonds of matrimony, start their life of procreation. What the enemy tries to do is stop what God wants to happen and now have all these men and women, young men and women out, out there fornicating, doing all of these things outside of marriage, and that's the open door to sin. That is what allows the enemy to come in. Once you break what God's covenant relationship should be, the enemy steps in and he starts to torment people. And then what happens as these doors open to sin, demonic spirits come in. For instance, like lust. Lust is the eye, lust of the eyes opens the door to all of this fornication, to pornography, to, to uh, all of these sexual perversions, homosexuality, all of these things go right, they come in in categories. Mm -hmm. So when you watch that screen for pornography, everything that's happening on that screen, demons come in in gangs. They just don't come in at one time. I mean, they don't come in one at a time, they come in in gangs. So as we age, as we grow up, there could be a time that when you come to Christ, just because you come to Christ does not mean that all of these things immediately leave. Deliverance is what sets the captives free. So there's two passages of Scripture. One is this, is that it's Hosea 4, 6. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Everybody quotes that. Mm -hmm. Everybody believes that. But here's what the Lord spoke to me about in a deliverance ministry. It's Isaiah 5, 13. And here's what that Scripture says. My people go into captivity for lack of knowledge. They are absolutely in bondage because they have no knowledge about what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they know they're in bondage, but nobody's speaking about it. So the man with mind control, this mind control spirit comes in and it starts to control a person's mind, will, and emotion. And when it does, they can be set free from it. So the follow-up on the story from the man that came last week that we talked about, he came from Washington State. They told me he was coming because he was messed up. And as I was traveling the church, the Lord, the Holy Spirit showed me I would be dealing with mind control. And uh, I said, that's in a book somewhere. So I didn't have it with me. I got to church, grabbed my book, started reading it, John Heckhart's book about um, a deliverance manual, opened it up. There's a section in there about mind control. And I'm doing the interview with the man at the table. His cousin is in the sanctuary. 
And as I get ready now to start the deliverance process, I said, bring her to the room. And I said, this is what we're dealing with, mind control. It's a spirit that sits on top of the head like an octopus. And this is how you get it out. It tells you how to, how to deal with this. So she said, um, did you see your text I just sent you? I said, no. She opened up my phone. I looked at it, and here's what it said. I'm in the sanctuary here. There is something sitting on the top of his head, my cousin's head. Mm -hmm. It's a squid or an octopus, and I don't know what this means. Well, see, it was confirmation to me that we were dealing with the exact, what the Holy Spirit has showed me, that's what you're dealing with, and this is how you need to get this out of this man. So we took him through the process of, de of deliverance. Uh, we work with things like this here. There are certain steps we take people through. The first step we take them through is a step that's called unforgiveness, is opening the door to make sure there's nothing between you and the Lord. Let me comment on that before you give the rest of it. I was speaking in a church in Chicago about 15 years ago, and I told the story of how I'd been sexually abused as a six or seven year old boy in a bathroom stall in Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. when, the, when the service was over, the pastor asked me to go out in the foyer and for people to come up and meet me. So while I'm in standing in line, there were a lot of people that were dealing with a similar issue. But one in particular that I remember, this man in his 50s, was walking up and 20 feet away he started crying, I haven't gotten over it, I haven't gotten over it, I haven't gotten over it. He had been sexually abused as a child and he didn't know about forgiving or forgiveness, and I believe there's a spiritual principle there over in, I think it's Matthew 18, mm -hmm. where the Lord says that if you don't forgive, you're going to be turned over to the tormentors, and evidently you've seen that in your ministry. The tormentors are the demon, demonic spirits wow. that come in, and they're abuse. You know, like you said, I couldn't forgive what had happened to him. So there's all types of abuse that people deal with. So I was dealing with abuse in a person. I said, you hear me? Now, this is mind control is controlling all these thoughts. You know, I can't get over it. I can't get over it. So my control is tormenting this person. And so I'm dealing with a person with abuse. So I said, come up, abuse. Come on up and come out. And the Spirit said, uh, well, which one of us do you want? I said, now, you got to realize I'm learning this here. Which one of us do you want? I said, well, I want to know how many are there. He said, there's five of us. I said, there's five of you. I said, give me your name. Sexual abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, and uh, I think of spiritual abuse. All of these abuses was under that, high, that heading of their abuse. Which one do you want? I want the one with sexual abuse, the one that uses this sexual thing that was in a person, or it could be mental abuse, verbal abuse, or physical abuse. These, each one of these abuses have been coming to a person when they're verbally abused, when they're sexually abused, and somebody would just say, come out abuse. It don't work like that. That's why that interview was so important. And like I did with the man with mind control, tell me what's going on in your life and what is this enemy trying to, what's the stronghold is what we're getting at. But yes, the, the unforgiveness, you got to deal with unforgiveness first to make sure that there, and get all those spirits in there that talk to you about. See, the difference between unforgiveness and a spirit of unforgiveness, when the person was sexually abused, so that was forgiving that person. There's a demon that comes in that always talks to you. Don't you remember what that man did? Don't you remember what he did to you there? And, this, and that's a spirit of unforgiveness. You got to get that spirit out. And so that one doesn't talk to you no more because he's there to torment. And once you get that spirit of unforgiveness out, then we move from to bitterness. And when we take a person through deliverance for bitterness, it starts in their toes all the way through the whole body. The Bible says that bitterness poisons the whole body. And when you start taking unforgiveness and bitterness and getting people clean and free of this, and then we deal past stubbornness, get past the spirit of stubbornness. And then what happens is when we move past that, we move into a spirit that's called mind control. You get very quickly, you need to get the mind control because he controls the way a person thinks. Once you start setting a person free from that, like we did that young man that came from Washington State, his, he was bad. You know what he was battling? He was battling whether or not he believed he could be saved or a Christian or not. Mm. He was absolutely tormented thinking there's no way that God would forgive him. There's no way that God could uh, set him free or he just has so many uh, thoughts that was about vulgar thoughts about cursing God and things like that. That mind control was all in his mind mm. and having to get that free, setting him free from the mental torment, that mental torment abuse, getting all of that out of that person, then a person is able now, 
And many times when you take a person through deliverance for mind control, it's the first time in their life that they've ever had a thought on their own. Wow. Think about what I just said. Demons have been controlling their mind. All the way, all the way through. Many many people are born with this. Because Uh, of the generational generational curse. All the way down. They are born with this and they're just messed up. Other things happen to us when we go to school. When we are in school, to go to public schools or just to listen to things on television or things like that or any of the advertisement, I want you all to start looking in society how much the octopus is used in advertisement. And it is a mind control thing that is prevalent that's used in a lot of societies. But again, I say everyone has this so that where no one's can escape it. You got to go through deliverance of it. Yeah. But it is that getting that person free. Many times when that person is set free from mind control, I have prayed for them and they actually sit right here on the couch and they'll pa- they passed out and went to the floor. Wow. And that spirit call that sp- then the wife's in the room with them calling that spirit out and everything. And then when they come up, they go, wow, what just happened to me? And that thing would just control their mind. When you're calling out mind control, we're calling out things like this here. Mental abuse, physical abuse. We're calling out uh, memory loss, foggy minded, uh, mind binding spirits, anything that does with the mind, uh, uh, dementia, Mm -hmm. things like this here. And many, many of our people could be set free that are in these, uh, these processes of dementia. If they would attack the spirit that controls their mind. That's amazing. And things like that. I lost my mother uh, to Alzheimer's uh, 12 years ago, and I've got a younger brother that's dealing with it right now. And you know, when people are looking at this, Pastor, folks, you, you probably think, this is bizarre. This stuff doesn't happen. But I've seen uh, Pastor Schaefer and his team and others in a service deliver people from demonic spirits and and go through the process. Tell us what happens. I mean, you'll see people throw up. You'll see people retch. You'll see their face change. You'll see their body change. Right. I mean, it's amazing. See, there is two, two things that's happening. Is there is a demonic manifestation that's in a person. They're, they may feel something moving in their legs, contorting their body. Something like that can be a contortion taking place. That's a demonic manifestation. But here is what deliverance ministries and it, that they should be looking for is that there are signs of deliverance. It's different than manifestations of a de- demon. Signs of deliverance are things of this. When demonic spirits come out of the body, they will come out of orifices that's in the body that you may cough, you may sneeze, you may burp, you may cry, you may yell, uh, your ears may pop, pressure in your ears. You can do it. Do, uh, your ears will equalize, pressure out your ears, you may pass gas. These type things, um, or, or spit, some people just spit, uh, these are all supernatural manifestations of, of a demonic spirit coming out. So that is what you're looking for. The, the twisting of the body is the demon contorting the body, rending the body, trying to tear the body. But when you start to ca- get, cast the spirit out, they come out of these orifices, and that's what we're looking for. Tell me what, or sighing. That's probably one of the hardest ones for me to determine is a person who was a sire. They would do this here, they'll go, <sighs> they will breathe, but you'll, they'll, they'll, they'll be able to say, there's something cold coming up. There's, it's, it's not warm air, it's cold. You mm-hmm. may feel this here coming out of the body, but it's coming out your airways. You know, I don't think we've spoken about it on this week's program, but last week's program, you explained because, I mean, Christians believe that they cannot be demonically possessed or oppressed. Go back and explain that for our audience again. Okay, so when a a person who is not saved, that they can be possessed by a demon. That means ownership. But when you become a Christian, that you are a three-part being. You're a body, soul, and a spirit man. And the spirit man, before salvation... You are dead in trespasses and sin. It's darkened, alienated from God, has nothing to do with God. And you are lost and in, in dead in trespasses and sin. But when you become, and let's just say that person is battling anger or that person is battling some type of addiction and or that they are battling pornography. 
And then all of a sudden they go into a service, they hear about Jesus, and they want to give their heart to the Lord. And through that process of the new birth, their spirit man has been rebirthed and it comes alive to Christ Jesus. Uh, old things pass away. And that's one thing. You have old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. This is your spirit man. Now the process is of letting is the mind, will, and emotion, and your body has to catch up with what has just happened to your spirit man. And through the process of deliverance, of, of casting down imaginations, getting rid of the old man, not allowing those things to control us, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So now you go through the process of learning of the, I can't do this anymore, I shouldn't do this, in my mind, will, and emotions, anger would be something that would be contrary to the, the, the fruit of the Spirit uh, in Galatians uh, chapter 5. All of these things here are things that we now start to take on the, the following Jesus' footsteps, according to 2 Peter. In uh, 1 Peter, calling, following in Jesus' footsteps, who did no sin, neither mm -hmm. was guile found in his mouth when he was... Re so then how can we follow in his footsteps and we're battling all this stuff? One of the things that we haven't done is taking our people through deliverance. Get from, delivered from that. They well, let me ask you a question. Once I become a Christian, the spirit man is, is redeemed, and, of course, the flesh is going to die anyway. Exactly. So if I sin, it's not the spirit that's sinning. It's the flesh. Right. So I've always got this battle. I guess that's what Paul said. You know, I, you know, I want to do right, but the body wants to do wrong. So explain how, you know, it's, it's the flesh that's warring with the so, spirit. Okay, so there's a difference between a demonic spirit that is driving you to um, anger or to uh, pornography. That can be a demonic spirit doing that. When you get that spirit out, and, the and that spirit is no, mo no longer in control of that area of your life, and that's what it is. It's the stone, a demonic spirit is the stone that's in the ground of the, of the heart of the soil. Do you remember that story, the mm -hmm. parable? Yeah. And he said, what's in that st stone? There would be nothing could grow under that stone. That stone is lifted up, that's the demonic spirit. You get the stone out, Look at that. That thing right there can bring forth good fruit in the ground. That's what this is doing, pulling the stone out. So what happens is that that can be in your spirit, your, in your mind, will, and emotion, a demonic spirit. Once that comes out, now you submit your body and your flesh to the will of God. I am not going to let saint, sin reign in this mortal body anymore. That is where you submit yourself to the Lord and you don't let the enemy use your flesh, give your, your flesh an occasion to sin. The demonic spirit, when, when he's there, you can't do nothing but do what it wants you to do. Because he controls you. He controls you. Yeah. Get that out. Now you're in control. Submit your will, your mind, your will to the Lord, and submit your body as a living sacrifice to the Lord. And that's how you walk out your perfect will in God. That's amazing. Pastor, you know, we're getting short on time again this week. I know there are people out there who have been stirred up and feel like they need help. Uh, tell us again how they can connect with your ministry and or anybody across America and around the world where they can go and get help for demonic oppression. Perfect. So yeah, uh, I pastor at University Parkway Church in Aiken, South Carolina. That's UPCOG dot org, upcog dot org. Go there. You can find information about deliverance. A ministry out of our church is called spiritualfreedomnetwork.com. People contact us all over the world for, for deliverance. You can go there, schedule a deliverance, call us. We will set something up. Other churches that I know that are involved, of course, is uh, Global Vision Bible Church with Pastor Greg Locke. Go there. Here in the Mount Nashville, Jewel. Tennessee area. Yeah. Yeah. Go right there to that place there. Um, and they do it every Sunday, mass deliverance. Seek you out a place for deliverance. You said it's ABC, and I told you to add D on the end of it. Yeah. Deliverance. Deliverance. That's right. D deliverance. <laughs> well, you know, you talk about your YouTube channel as well, so I'm, I'm thinking that people are going to want to see Deliverance somebody. with Pastor Henry. Yeah. That's it. YouTube. Deliverance with Pastor Henry. YouTube, Rumble, or Facebook or anything like this, go in a deliverance with Pastor Henry, you'll see my face right there, and we will teach you about deliverance. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience that we haven't covered last week or this week? 
I think this is good. I think everybody, uh, here's what I tell people, everybody needs deliverance. You told me that, and, and I want to go through deliverance. Mm -hmm. I mean, w you, you, you know, because of the stuff, the darkness that I did in my youth, exactly. and, you know, I want to go through it, and I'm not ashamed. If there's anything that's oppressing or controlling me, I want to get rid Mine of it. Mine was, and when I started, it was d uh, suicide. I battled suicide all my life, and that's what I had to do is get, admit that I had a problem. And then as I was taking people through deliverance, they were being delivered of suicide. I got someone to pray over me, and I got set free from the suicide myself. It came out of me. So I don't yeah. battle it no more. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we need, we need to help people with that. That's and right. I told you when my first wife died in 01, I drove across a bridge in Florida and heard a voice speak to me mm -hmm. that said, stop the car and jump to your death. Speak to that for about 30 seconds on this suicide. Suicide thought. is a spirit that can be generational and that it can, it's passed down the bloodline. And I picked mine up from my uncle who killed himself here in Tennessee when I was 12 years old, walked into the room, and the Lord showed me that's when it entered to you. And I battled it all the way into my 50s until I got free. They can be free as well. But you got to come against the Spirit, admit that you're having it, battle it, and Jesus will set you free. Call that Spirit up and call it out. Yeah. Go find someone who knows how to do deliverance. Amen. That's what you have or, to do. Or contact us and That's we'll right. connect with you. Pastor, thank you again so much for being on the program. Thank you. Love you, my brother. Love you too. Friends, I want to thank you for watching not only today's program, but last week's program. And, I, and the Lord just spoke to me and said, there's somebody out there that wants uh, both of these shows. And um, if you would like to have both of these shows on deliverance that we've done with Pastor Henry Schaefer, call us at 615-415-0504 or contact me at my email address, kwfar, kwphar at gmail.com, and we will send these, or we might put it all on one DVD. We'll either give you a link where you can watch on your computer. We'll get you both of these programs if you want to see it and, you know, be delivered from something you're going through. But if you need deliverance, Pastor, again, give us, give us your website. SpiritualFreedomNetwork.com. SpiritualFreedomNetwork.com. Friends, stay tuned. We've got a very important message and then some beautiful music coming up right after that. Our mission at In Your Corner Ministries is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To that end, we've produced over 500 TV programs that have aired into over 200 countries worldwide through international television. But producing TV programs is a small portion of our ministry outreach. We do short-term medical mission trips and food distributions to the destitute Haitian Batays of the Dominican Republic and poor villages in Central America. Friends, that's why we're here, because the greatest three needs in these villages are, number one, there's no medical care. If you do not have money, you can forget about getting medical care. Secondly, there is abject poverty. Most of the people work here for less than $5 a day from sunup to sundown, either doing construction or working in the sugar cane fields. And thirdly, there is no clean drinking water in the villages. Everyone has to purchase water to drink. So you can be the answer to their prayers. Friends, you know, as followers of Jesus Christ, we're benevolent. All of us are benevolent. But sometimes the need is much greater than anything that we can do. So if God lays it upon your heart to be a part of this ministry, to help us, help others, or carry the gospel around the world, we'd love to hear from you. You can call me at 615-415-0504. And a lot of times this program airs in the middle of the night, we don't answer the phone. Leave your name and number, we'll call you back. Or you can email me at kwphar, k-w-p-h-a-r-r, at gmail.com. But ask the Lord if He'd have you partner with this ministry to reach a lost and dying world for Jesus Christ.
just common flesh and bones. But I'll prove someday just what I say. I'm of a special kind. For when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He